welcome back. I want to discuss Dylan Larkin. That Honestly, I got up this morning and I thought, you know what? I want to do a video on Dylan Larkin. So here we are. Number 15 pick in 2014. And I, I think that Dylan Larkin might be the player that I see the most discussion about from the Red Wings. And good for good reason. Now he's rumored to be the next captain. Turns 25 this coming July. And so this is the guy that they're looking to to be the leader. And I, I think that's the thing. I think that Dylan Larkin is going to be the leader for the Detroit Red Wings. And the offensive side of the game is there. It's important. But I think the leadership and, and the qualities that he can provide in that way, to me, he feels sort of like what Bo Horvat's done in Vancouver. I kind of see that with him in, in Detroit as well. Now, so he's drafted in 2014. He doesn't make his debut till 2015. So... No big deal, right? So 2015-2016 plays 80 games, 23 goals, 22 assists, 45 points. And very good numbers. And then in the playoffs, plays five games, one assist. That's that's the extent of his playoff experience in the NHL, still five games. This is a player who desperately wants to play more playoff games. And this is also the kind of guy who may not wow you with the numbers during regular season, but it feels like he's the kind of guy who's going to score big goals in the playoffs. He's the kind of guy who's going to be like a, a Ryan Smith type when it comes to big games. He's the guy you want to go to. So that first year is ice time, 16 minutes and 33 seconds per game. Goals per 60 minutes played, an even one. Points per 60 minutes played, an even two. His shooting percentage that year was 10.41%. Interestingly enough, those numbers are not out of line with where he is right now in his career. So the first thing that stands out to me with Larkin is this is about ice time. A Larkin will produce as long as he's got the ice time. So 2016, 2017, we kind of see that as well. 80 games played, 17 goals, 15 assists, 32 points. For naysayers, for people who don't think Larkin's an elite level player, this was their proof. He played 16 minutes and nine seconds per game. His goals per 60 minutes fell to 0.8. His points per 60 minutes fell to a career low 1.5 and his shooting percentage 9.55%. So the numbers trended in the wrong direction. But you kind of knew that's the sophomore slump. He's going to bounce back, and he did. 2017-2018, 82 games, 16 goals, 47 assists, 63 points. His ice time goes up by a lot. He's playing almost four minutes per game more than he was the year before, 19 minutes, 51 seconds. So his goals per 60 minutes actually drops to 0 0.6. His points per 60 minutes goes up to 2.3. So the big difference here really is Larkin, who his first two years had more goals than assists, now he's a setup man. And that's the big difference maker right there. The goals are still low. The points have gone up. 2018-2019, he, he was actually ninth in the NHL in shots with 287. So since his shooting percents, 10.41%, 9.55%, and then 6.9%, well, just take more shots. So he did this. 76 games, 32 goals on those 287 shots. Now, the 32 goals are a career high to this stage. 41 assists and 73 points. So almost a point a game. And his ice time goes up again by exactly two minutes per game. 21 minutes and 51 seconds. Goals per 60 minutes, 1.2. That's the highest he's been. Points per 60 minutes, 2.6. Also the highest he's been. His shooting percentage, career high as well, 11.15%. One of only two seasons out of the five he's played where his shooting percentage has been above 10%. So the season that was, of course, shortened in March, the last time he was on the ice was in March in a game, uh, 71 games played, 19 goals, 34 assists, 53 points. His ice time drops, not a lot, 21 minutes and 15 seconds per game. So he's still getting a lot of ice time. And his advanced stats are still pretty good. So I'm pretty sure he's got good standing in the advanced stats community. And so goals per 60 minutes, 0 0.8. Points per 60 minutes, 2.1. So his points per 60 minutes now is down to right around where it was in his rookie season. He's just playing a lot more. So his points per game is still high. His goals per 60 minutes down to 0.8, which is where it was in 2016-2017. It's below where it was his rookie season and below where it was the year before. 
Point eight is probably right around where it's going to end up. It feels like he's a 20 goal scorer. He's a guy who might get you 20. That 32 might end up being an outlier in his career. Uh, his shooting percentage dropped last year to 8.5%. For his career, it's a 9.4%. So again, he has to get a lot of shots if he wants to get back into anywhere near a 30 goal range. For his career, 389 games played, 107 goals, 159 assists, 266 points. And his average ice time throughout his career, 19 minutes and 3 seconds. It's been above that the last three seasons of his career. And you can expect it to be high again, and here's why. He is the number one center in Detroit. And the number two center on any depth chart I looked at, Fabry, is projected, projected to be the number two center. Now, Robbie Fabry had a very good season for Detroit last year after coming over from St. Louis. He is no threat to Larkin's number one spot. And with the line mates Bertuzzi and Mantha, as long as all three of them can stay healthy, that's a decent first line. Now, Jeff Blaschel's already come out and said he doesn't want to have to rely on that first line too much, which is just another way of a coach saying, I want to have more than one line going. But in, in Detroit, they're not quite there yet. They have some of these key key pieces moving forward but if you look at their center depth if you look at their 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 basically who's going to be the next guy it's still Larkin so Rasmussen's coming up does he project as a number one center probably not Valeno debatable as to whether or not Valeno is going to be a number one center in the NHL Berggren maybe Jonathan Berggren off to a pretty but not yet right and then Niederbach. Niederbach had a decent World Juniors, but does he project as a number one center in the NHL? Probably not. So the one thing with Detroit is, unless, and this is not likely, Lucas Raymond ends up being a center at some point, they'd have to transition him to the middle. Larkin doesn't have anybody breathing down his neck that might knock him down to that number two center spot. Now, I think that makes it more difficult for Detroit. I think not having a, a really good one-two punch down the middle hurts the Red Wings. And I, I, I while I, I like Zadina, and I think Raymond's going to be great, and I think uh, Soderblom's going to be this great big forward. Soderblom doesn't project out as a number one center either. The, the interesting side of this could very well be Larkin may need to prove these numbers wrong and overachieve. And all of these numbers may need to go up. Not as not as his ice time. There's a limit when it comes to ice time for a forward. But he may need to blow up his points records, his goals and points per 60 minutes, and prove that this was just a precursor to how great he was going to be. Now, he was 5th in Calder voting in 2016. And in 2019, he was 20th in the Selkie voting. And I think at some point in time, he'll get more traction when it comes to a potential Selkie. The big thing is, his defensive numbers last year, playing in Detroit, his plus-minus was miserable because he played in Detroit. It wasn't a measure of him as much as it was a measure of the team he was playing for. August 10th, 2018, he showed that he wanted to stay in Detroit. So this is while they're in the midst of the rebuild. And he signed the five-year $30.5 million contract he has, which pays him $6.1 million a year. I think that's a very reasonable price for what... Uh, Dylan Larkin brings for brings to Detroit. The question mark I have with 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 him is, so what's the offensive upside for this season? So I thought, you know what, I'll look at his his scoring against their divisional opponents over the last three years. Against Carolina, played nine games, one goal, five assists. Against Chicago, six games played, three goals, three assists. Against Columbus, nine games played, two goals and six assists. Against Dallas, six games played, two goals and five assists. Florida, ten games played, three goals, six assists. Nashville, six games played, three goals, two assists. And against Tampa, eight games played. And it makes sense that your, your points per game would be lowest against Tampa, because Tampa plays you tough if you're Detroit. One goal, four assists. And for his totals, 54 games played over the last three seasons against those teams, 15 goals, 31 assists, 46 points. This is right about in line with one of his better seasons. So the interesting thing with this is, and again, that's over the last three years, his scoring against the teams that are supposed to be, you know, this is your division. I've, I've been so used to hedging on which teams are in which division. I'm used to, I still hedge even though we know these are the divisions. But against these seven teams, that's decent. So we may see his points per game go up. 
we may see better numbers because over the last three seasons, he's done pretty well against these teams. He's been near a point a game against everybody except Tampa. So, and I guess you could say the nine games and six points for Carolina, the one goal, eh, you know, but still, his overall numbers aren't bad. It's interesting to me that in 54 games, he got 15 goals. So that's about normal. That's about where he belongs, 46 points. But this, if he, if he gets a, an output at that level, it's still a better output than he showed this past season. So it's going to be interesting to see how Larkin does and how the Red Wings do and when he's going to be announced as captain, all this other wonderful stuff, because that, that is highly likely be very surprising now if he wasn't going to be the next captain of the team. And I guess the question mark I have with Detroit, the one question I would have for Steve Eiserman, and maybe this is why he was so choked at, at the draft lottery, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt that Lucas Raymond's going to be a scoring star in the NHL. But I think he was looking at this draft and saying, if we get that number one draft pick and we get Lafreniere, or if we can get Byfield, or if we can get Stutzla, all three of them projecting as centers in the NHL, and then he ended up having to take a winger, maybe that's part of the anger for Eiserman, because he may look at his depth chart when it comes to, to prospects and say, we have some good centers coming up, but we don't have that prime center. So it'll be interesting to see how much longer they rely on Larkin and whether or not that keeps his numbers up. Because if at some point he ends up seeing a, a, a reduction in his ice time, you have to think that his points totals are going to go down as a result as well. But again, maybe this year in year six, maybe he blows it up. Maybe he hits. Maybe he plays 56 games, gets 60 points, and changes the narrative. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.